What are the papers saying this morning? We'll be taking a look at that right about now. And we have a guest to help us understand what's beyond uh, the headline. I'm talking about architect Ezekiel Yetuk. Uh, he'll be joining us today in his capacity as a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be with you. Good to see you Thank again. You. Thanks for wrapping up the year for us and the uh, you know, news of a review. Uh, we are kicking off with the Nigerian Tribune this morning. One funny story I can already see there is about a sex party. And it says... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why did you leave the headline to go look at it? <laughs> it says over there, police arrest organizers of Kaduna's sex party. Ha! Ah! Oh my God. Over 10 million children in Nigeria. Uh, six others may uh, face acute malnutrition in 2021. UNICEF warns, and also how Femi Odekunle battled COVID-19 for 12 days before his death. Uh, we also have on the Tribune this morning, why North opposed first motion for independence, and that's from uh, Yakasai. Terrorism, 299 killed in six years, Chibok community cries out. Current state of the nation, that's the major story you can find there. Current state of the nation, worrisome, Ayoko laments. Once federal government and leaders to tackle obstacles to political stability in 2021. Um, Gombe State Government says Nigeria overwhelmed by kidnapping and banditry crisis. Uh, Kuka is right. All is not well with Nigeria. And that is from Autumn. Um, a few others. Um, I think those are the major ones. And of course, uh, there's uh, pictures of 2020, the year that was not normal. All right, so Ezekiel Yaitok, I think we can prob probably start with um, the message from Mayoko um, saying the current state yeah. of the nation is worrisome. Let, let's get your, your thoughts on that one first. Yeah. I, I, I think he's stating the obvious as at today. In fact, um, my wife called an at my attention to somebody who wrote that uh, 2020 was a year that had only five months. You had January, you had February. You have lockdown, you have answers, and you had December. <laughs> and um, that just wraps it up for so many people. And um, there are many things, the state of the nation, all is not well. All is not well, and we cannot pretend. So when the, 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 the elder statesman, uh, Mr. Anyoku, makes that statement, I think he's just stating the obvious. And that brings me uh, to the issue that has been on the front burner for quite some weeks now, which has to do with um, Father Kuka's, um, not uh, Father, now Bishop Kuka's um, statement. And sometimes it beats my imagination that what is so obvious, people at a time like this will leave the substance and chase the shadow. And like has been said by so many time and time again, uh, Bishop Kuka happens to be one Nigerian that I think that this government could have handled this issue in a much more diplomatic manner. In a, because, it's, you know, a man told me something, and he said, may the man who is always believed never lie against you. That his father told him, may the man who is always believed never lie against you. Father Coker has seasoned himself in the minds of Nigerians as one man, that has integrity, as one man that speaks truth to power over the decades, not even years, over the decades. So when he speaks, and this is what he does every year, whether it was Jonathan's time, whether it is um, this time, you know, so I, I think that we would have done ourselves better good by saying, well, these are issues that confront us. These are issues we are interrogating. These are issues we are looking into. And this government uses issues very seriously, and we are going to do everything humanly possible to address these issues. We are already doing this, we are already doing and not to attack the man. The more you want to attack the man, the more you, you, you discredit yourself. Okay, so yeah, let's um, jump to other papers now. Uh, we'll start with the punch. The screamer there is, experts warn about consequences of low testing. States abandon enforcement. Uh, there are a couple of writers to that story that uh, amplifies the message that experts are giving. Uh, late detection of COVID-19, 
low testing rates increase risk of death. That virologist, uh, we've had one here on a couple of occasions to talk about that as well. On the front page, there is a picture that might um, seem curious. There is another story here. Customers, consumers will get refund for meter payment, says Neck. Kuka, advocate of democracy, issues raised glaring Jermaine, that Jermaine, that's uh, PFN. External reserves rise. End December at $35.35 billion. Let's go to the bottom now. I'm suspecting that has to do with the national identity card. Exactly. Applicants at the National Identity Management Commission office uh, in Alausa, Lagos. Uh, no social distancing, apparently. Just underneath it, you'll see the headlines. Uh, Kaduna aborts publicized sex party. Please apprehend organizers. Customs men kill Ogun motorcyclists while pursuing smugglers. We secured the EFCC story, read already from the previous paper. And then we have Ohaneze fixes president general's election for January 10. There's been some issues uh, with that. And then this story, for some reason, has been, you know, um, joining at me. What's the word now? Just clipping away at me. Uh, jilted lover's suicide. Police allege foul play, lunch probe. Um, I don't know, since I saw that story, I mm. can't wait to finish up and go read uh, the details of it. Um, over to you now, uh, Mr. Yaituk. Okay, um, if you look at the headline, you know, experts warn about consequences of low testing, test states abandoned and forth. What, I mean, in my adult life, one of the greatest contradictions that I've had to um, contend with is this issue of COVID-19. I really can't understand what is going on. And the picture in the front page of the punch that we are looking at now tells the whole story. Exactly what does the government believe about COVID-19? That's really my biggest challenge. It started with when this whole thing came up, is it that the federal government did not really believe in it when we went to a door state? And the government, I use that word instructively, and the government threw all caution to the wind and allowed this jamboree called campaigning, which was absolutely unnecessary. If anything, it was the best time for INEC to redefine electioneering in Nigeria, for us to go into town hall meetings, to go into one-on-one -on -one meetings, but they allowed that, that frittering of our public resources, that, that speaking loud and saying nothing, that jamboree to continue. And people say, if this is going on, it means that COVID-19 is really not there. This is government. Now, when the second wave comes up, what do we have again? The same government wants to take on something absolutely important, the national identity number absolutely important, inevitable. But the timing gives me concern again. Look at the front page of the picture. In the supposed second wave, they are now telling, don't have crossover service, which I would want to align myself with to some extent, you know, though it has holes. But the same you are saying you must go um, get your uh, national identity number, which is important, but <clears throat> maybe later in the day we will interrogate it. Could they be a more sane, a more cerebral, a more effective, a more electronic-based way of achieving this step one step? To look at that picture. I mean, it is horrendous. It is horrific. It is oh. horrifying. How can a government encourage this at a time like this? Is COVID-19 really real and two? Like, like you said, if, really uh, we will be real. interrogating it a little more extensively uh, yeah. in the course of this morning. Yeah. Uh, but for now, I guess I'll we should uh, yeah. take on another paper. Yeah, let's we can jump to the nation newspapers, uh, see what we can find. Uh, the first one there says the federal government mounts pressure on states uh, for COVID-19 action. And, um, you know, it's a follow-up to, of course, uh, the conversation on COVID-19 and the government's efforts so far. Lagos uh, reactivates disability trust fund. Politicians hijack appeal court justices' appointment. 
Also on the nation this morning, NCC lifts embargo on seam replacement. And um, also, um, what else can we find here? Body of ex Nigerian U.S. envoy arrives. Uh, if you remember, uh, the late um, Justice Sylvanus Nsofo, uh, who passed on not long ago, um, his body finally arrived in Nigeria. Crossover service role deepens. Uh, I think you, you could also get to share your thoughts on that one. It, it's been a regular culture for many, many years here in Nigeria. And, you know, what do you think, you know, Nigerians would, or how do you think their reaction would be in the face of um, a pandemic? Uh, mostly because there's been other things that have been allowed to go on, um, you know, and so it, it, it seems hypo hypocritical to be telling people to not go to church or to, you know, go to church and wrap up by 11 p.m. So, Quickly, you know, I'd like to get your thoughts on that one. But before that, troops yeah. rescue 23 in Katsina. Uh, Catholic bishop uh, abductors yet to make contact. Um, those are the major ones of the nation this morning. So let's start with uh, the crossover service, as they call Yeah, I talk. Yeah. That of the crossover service is just the double standards that we really can't. Nigerians are so confused, they don't know. It's like turn left, they turn left, then turn right, they turn right. And the next one, they turn, everybody's like, please, please leave me alone. Now, look at the scene management, what is going on. We are going to our markets, we are going to all sorts of places. We are going, to, we cannot go for crossover service. I think that one night at the crossover service, I don't think it's different, much, much different from the services we've been attending all that we would have been told is observe certain protocols because these are things that people have done over the years. And the Bible says, you know, the spirit of man, let me not go into what the Bible says, but the spiritual aspect of man is the most important aspect of man. So religion is the opium of the soul. And because of that, there are certain things you should be careful in trading on when religion is con concerned. But when they said people observe certain protocols in church, everybody aligned with those protocols because they saw them as making sense. Well, but when well, you now come well, and say, isolate... Yeah, let me yes. just quickly, you know, ask. I, 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 do you think Nigerians are being overly sensitive towards this? Because if we are being honest with ourselves, we are still in a pandemic. And this should be a time oh, when um, tell Nigerians... Me, tell me, where is the pandemic when I go for my national identity number? Where is yeah, the pandemic? It, it, so it might seem unfair... You know, and of course, it's not disregarding we those. Well, we, we, we cannot That's actually say we do tit for tat that because maybe one group is flouting the rules. Yeah, so everyone and should then, go ahead and uh, do I it. mean, the church should be championing uh, the right behavior and encouraging so government policies that is help to promote. No, no, no. What the church should champion is adhere to protocols exactly. and not cancel a tradition. Adhere to protocols. That's what we should be preaching, you know? And please, um, before we run out of this paper, there's a story of the disabilities, which I, I want to commend Lagos State Government for the reactivating the Disability Trust Fund. I, I want to commend Lagos State Government for that because it's very important. The people living with disability and all those things don't have a good accommodation in our nation state. And any government that can do anything positive in that direction has my full support and encouragement. And please, next to it is a very, very important, worrisome um, um, piece, which is politicians hijack appeal court justices appointment. I think this should really, really, really worry the nation. And politicians, the moment they interfere with justice process, they've killed this country. And whoever, sorry to say that, Mr. President, and the, um, the, the I don't know about the Attorney General, but the head of, of the judiciary, should please do everything humanly possible to shield the judiciary from the politicians. The moment that we lose confidence in the judiciary, we have become a failed state. So this is a very important piece of information that the whole nation, particularly should hold two people, the, the CJN and the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Politicians must never, never interfere with the appointment of, of uh, uh, appointments within the judiciary. All right, let's uh, move on to the Guardian newspaper and see what we can do with it.
the big one here is uh, Buhari's oil ministry reels under corruption allegations. That's it on, okay, uh, it's not yet on your screen. You should see it in a bit. It's just been into that picture. Uh, Buhari's oil ministry reels under corruption allegation. Uh, there are three, about more than three writers to that story. As stakeholders demand action on Senate probes, NNPC spends a hundred and sixteen million naira on biro paper ink uh, that conversation has been controversial uh, there's a picture there of uh, governor song wolu there is uh, something underneath it i think it has to do with the the font that we just uh, mentioned they're a little too tiny for me to uh, read out for you uh, women list questions and as judicial panels must answer why COVID-19 vaccine may lose potency before arrival administration. Um, I'd like you to speak on that as well. NIMC introduces booking system as applicants besiege centers for NIN. Okay, um, let's talk about this Buhari oil ministry rails under corruption. That ministry has been going up and down. Mr. Yotok, what are yeah. we not you seeing? Know, yes. You know, I'm really concerned for our president. And the biggest, you know, selling point that he has, which is integrity. I'm really, really concerned for Mr. President. Because the ministry, the petroleum um, 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 subsector and the ministry where, where he hates as the uh, minister, substantive minister, no honest Nigerian will tell you that there has been any change whatsoever. No honest Nigerian, even his closest political allies and cronies, will not tell him that there is a difference in the petroleum ministry. All the secrecy, all the mysteries, everything shrouded in mysticisms remain. And even not just remain, the answer has been upped in a way, so to speak. And this should not be the record of Mr. President. What will be his, 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 his scorecard when he leaves office? What will he say will be the justification why he did not allow somebody from the South-South to be the Minister of Petroleum for whatever reason, or even anybody, a professional that comes and sits there, well, let, you let, are let me, here for one reason. Let, let me interject and just ask you about that uh, um, subtitle there. And then PC spends 116 million naira on biro paper and ink. Shouldn't that conversation be amplified under an administration that, you know, lords an anti-corruption fight? Shouldn't there be an explanation given to Nigerians? Because it seems that that story is riding down, as most stories seem to do in Nigeria, after the initial bruhaha. It just goes away. That is because Nigerians have come to say, okay, okay, how soon can 2023 come? Nigerians have, have completely lost, lost faith, you know? And I think it's not late for Mr. President to do one or two things to say, no, enough is enough. It's not enough to say, oh, I trust people. And by the way, that picture is Pacheli School of the, of the Blind in Lagos. So, because that's still my area of interest, so to speak. But coming into the issue of corruption, this, 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 this administration has unfortunately failed excellently in addressing the issue of corruption. That, that sounds so like, that going, sounds like a, you know, a contradiction. <laughs> sounds yeah, like yeah, a contradiction. Does. But let's just... Yeah, but, um, when you, when, you, when, you, when you fail very well, anything very well is excellent. <laughs> okay, I want to uh, wrap things up there. Uh, though we just have one headline to highlight. 2020 review events that shapes Nigerian politics. You might want to go catch that up uh, from the Business Day newspaper. But time is up. So we say thank you very much as always to you for joining us and for everyone that um, watched. Thank you, and I wish you a wonderful 2021. Same to you, sir. Back, back at you, Thanks sir. Thanks a lot. Take care. We'll see you in a bit.
<laughs> He's not gone yet. All right, uh, we will go on a break. And when we come back, we will be looking at today in history.